NFL is an alternative football league with some rules similar to the NFL and some rules vastly different compared to the NFL. The XFL was a one-year wonder back in 2001 and it was a massive failure. There were many cons and bad things that happened during that 2001 season where it just ended that year. The TV rating started off high but dropped off quickly and many people thought that the XFL would never be heard of again. In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about the XFL and how it regained popularity coming back into existence. In 2017 and 2018, Vince McMahon, owner in 2001 and owner now, talked about a revival of the league trying to, trying to rival Alliance of American Football, or better known as the AAF. Early in 2018, it was confirmed that the XFL would start their season in February of 2020. Vince McMahon is very invested in this league as he is willing to invest $500 million to make this league succeed. McMahon's ideas are making this game higher scoring, faster paced, less injuries, and more family friendly for the viewers. There are many rule changes that will impact this and help make the league different than the NFL. The first of the big rule changes is on kickoffs. The spot of the kickoff will be set at the kicking team's 25 yard line. The NFL and college standards is the 35 yard line. However, members of the kicking team, excluding the kicker, will line up at the receiving team's 35 yard line and blockers on the receiving team must line up at their 30 yard line, only a five yard difference. Only the kicker and returner slash returners can move until the ball is either caught or three seconds after it hits the ground. Kickoffs that go out of bounds or fall short of the receiving team's 20 yard line will come to the kicking team's 45. The NFL and NCAA only require a kick to travel 10 yards. Kicks out of bounds are placed at the receiving team's 40 yard lines, 15 yard difference. The XFL will use two different types of touchbacks. A major touchback occurs when a kick travels into the end zone in the air, which will result in the receiving team taking possession at the 35. A minor touchback will occur when the ball bounces into the end zone, which will result in the receiving team taking possession at the 15. These rule changes discourage either team from purposely taking a touchback. Teams can request to attempt an onside kick under more conventional kickoff rules. This has a lot of potential to go bad, saying they can get the ball at the opposing team's 45 if the onside kick fails. I feel like these changes will help scoring, as a returner will be able to get more touchdowns in the NFL compared to the NFL, and it will certainly reduce injuries as players are not running at full speed at the returners, so they will have more space to return and not get laid out right away. The second of the major rule changes is on punting. The XFL will not allow gunners, gunners are the players that get to the return man in order to force a fair catch or get a tackle for basically no gain. All players on a punting team must remain on or behind the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. This is the carryover from the original XFL, although the league had scrapped the rule midway through its only season. The coffin corner punt, which means the ball travels like it gets punted out of bounds at the two yard line, which means any punt out that goes out of bounds will go to the 35 yard line. This, the attempts to neutralize punt coverage are made with the intention of encouraging more fourth down conversions. The same touchback rules for kickoffs also apply to punts. Just like kickoffs, this will help score and reduce injuries. The PAT is the next big rule change. Usually in the NFL, a team can decide to kick the PAT for one point or bring the offense out on the two yard line and go for a two point play. The XFL is different as there are three different scoring options after a touchdown. All of these is with the offense on the field trying to score. First is one point starting at the one yard line. Second is two points starting at the five yard line. And finally is three points starting at the 10 yard line. Each of these is only one play, and this implements a lot of strategies of scoring. Touchdowns can now equate to six to nine points and are all possible to happen and likely to have happened. This will make teams strategize a lot in order to see how a team can come back or build a lead. It will be very interesting to see how this plans out for the league. Your time is vastly different compared to the NFL and college football. It's the equivalent to a hockey or soccer shootout. If overtime happens, each team will have five opportunities to score a two-point conversion from five yards out. Each score will be two points, and teams will go back and forth until a team is mathematically eliminated from winning. There are no ties in the XFL, so it is possible this shootout can go to seven to eight rounds if teams match each other's scores. 
This new overtime rule will help both teams have a chance to win the game, unlike the NFL. In the NFL, a team could drive down the field and score a touchdown on their first possession, and the opposing team would have no chance to win or have their offense have a chance to win. The XFL lets each team's offense have a chance to win. A major change is the clock and pace of game. The XFL wants the pace of the game to be increased and these changes will let it happen. Outside of the two-minute warning, the clock will continuously run like a soccer match. During this time, the clock will, would only stop during a change of possession. This will reverse after the two-minute warning, which the XFL will use. In the, in the two-minute warning, it's basically like foot NFL um, rules where out-of-bounds plays, incomplete plays, stuff like that are um, stopping the clock. The only way to stop the clock, like I said, were change of possession or calling a timeout this, um, before the two-minute warning. The play clock will only be 25 seconds long, measured from the spotting of the ball, roughly the same as the NCAA rule for plays when the clock is stopped. This is five seconds longer than the CFL rule, which is 20 seconds from the spotting of the ball. The XFL efforts to speed up the spotting are aimed to make the two lengths of time nearly the same, 30 to 32 seconds overall. The NFL standard is 40 seconds from the end of the previous play and also used during the NCAA during plays when the clock is running. AAF and the previous XFL measure was 35 seconds from the end of the previous play. In conjunction with this rule, the XFL has proposed placing a one-way radio into the all offensive player helmets to allow the offensive coordinator to run no auto offenses more effectively. Teams will be given two timeouts per half instead of three. Instant replays will be limited to 60 seconds and there will be no coaches challenges. The sky judge will originate all reviews. This will keep fans on their seats and encouraging them to continue watching the games. This can be very beneficial, but also very strategical for offenses to incorporate. Overall, these rules make the game a lot different and help reduce injuries and help score and go up. It is possible that the NFL could adapt these rules if they see that injuries are reduced and it looks like it would help the NFL out. Now, let's talk about the league in general. There are eight total teams in two conferences, the Western Conference and Eastern Conference. The Western Conference's teams include the Dallas Renegades, Houston Roughnecks, Los Angeles Wildcats, and Seattle Dragons. The Eastern Conference has the DC Defenders, New York Guardians, St. Louis Battlehawks, and the Tampa Bay Vipers. The way the players were put onto teams was that each team was assigned a quarterback before a draft, and then there was a draft on a two-day standard um, that was drafted for each position setup. For example, offensive line, defensive front, like defensive linemen and linebackers, special teams, etc. Some of the notable players in the league include former NFL players like Sammy Coates, Christine Michael, Eli Rogers, Coney Ely, Marquette King, and many more. The XFL plans on having a 10-game season starting this Saturday and Sunday. Each team will, each team will have five home and five away games with no bye weeks. Each team will play the other three teams in their conference twice and every team in the other conference once. This will be followed by a two-week playoff where four total teams will play and have a championship game on April 26, 2020. Most weeks will have four games with two played on Saturday and two played on Sunday. The schedule is nothing abnormal, but it fits very well with the league and the number of teams. Every team will play each other once, so at least so fans will get to see every team play each other. Overall, the XFL is back and ready to succeed. The league looks like it has tons of potential with its new rules and changes. This may be the start of something huge for football and can grant NFL players that weren't undrafted a chance in a football league. Hopefully this league succeeds and doesn't fall apart like it formerly did or like the AAF did a few years ago. That's all for me. What team are you rooting for? I got the New York Guardians. I am out everybody. Peace.